From ghosts to pageants to bands, the Tipton Hotel has seen it all. Hey guys, it's Phoebe with Ms. Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best Sweet Life of Zack and Cody episodes. And everyone says I look exactly like Sharpay. Really? Yeah. I don't see it. We're taking a look at the most memorable episodes of this beloved Disney Channel show. However, we will not be including any crossover episodes. Let's get to it. Number 10, Twins at the Tipton. But we're twins. You can't keep us from our peeps. This series is certainly no stranger to twin humor, but this episode really made viewers feel as though they were seeing double. In this episode, the Tipton Hotel hosts a twin convention, and hilarity ensues as the characters pair up to go on double dates. While Zack and Cody hit it off with English twins Janice and Jessica, Maddie and London sit through an awkward date with fraternal twins Dirk and Kirk. So, Dirk, do you uh, have any hobbies? Taxidermy. I like to stuff dead things. <laughs> Who doesn't? Things take an interesting turn when Cody, who had just been dumped a few days prior, ends up winning the affection of both Janice and Jessica, leaving Zack to wallow alone. This episode's plot twist certainly keeps viewers on their toes. <laughs> pip pip, cheerio, ta-ta, peace out. Yes. Number nine, band in Boston. Nothing ever goes according to plan at the Tipton Hotel, but that's a part of its charm. In this episode, the twins attempt to join a battle of the bands with their friends Max and Tapeworm. However, they hit a snag when Cody reprimands Zack for caring more about the band's image than their songs. What's up? <laughs> Rehearsal, where have you been? Shopping. What do you think of my new outfit? I think Halloween was last month. <laughs> Dude, this is my rock star look. The climactic moment comes when Max and Tapeworm lock the twins in a closet until they sort out their differences. Look, you have to admit, you were acting a little bossy. I had to be bossy because you were goofing off. I wasn't goofing off. I was just trying to find our look. I wanted us to be the best band ever. So did I. While Zack and Cody may not always agree or get along, their relationship is a realistic portrayal of sibling dynamics. And that's a part of what makes them endearing to audiences. Cool down. Number eight, bowling. Oh, face it, we could whip your fleagles at any sport. How about bowling? <laughs> it's rare for tertiary characters to receive the spotlight, but this is a perfect example of how a show can create a comedic and satisfying episode while focusing on characters beyond the leads. While Zack and Cody still receive a significant amount of screen time, the real star of this episode is Arwen. But it's okay, I confess! Oh, stop badgering me, I can't take it anymore! The Tipton is set to play a bowling match against rival Hotel St. Mark's, but their prospects look bleak once Zack is kicked off of the team only to be replaced with London. Arwen, incentivized by the prospect of a kiss with Carrie, steps in to save the day. <laughs> Number seven, lip syncing in the rain. We'll do what they did in the movie, singing in the rain. You'll lip sync while Maddie is behind the curtain doing the actual singing. It's no secret that many of the cast members of The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody were also in other Disney movies and shows. This episode plays with this fact by having London and Maddie compete for the role of Sharpay Evans in their school production of High School Musical. Hey guys, great news, I'm playing Sharpay. <laughs> Sharpay! Since this episode came out in 2007, a full year after the release of High School Musical in 2006, most viewers were well aware that Ashley Tisdale played the part of Sharpay Evans in the movie. You know, you even kind of look like Zac Efron. <laughs> and I don't look like Ashley Tisdale? <laughs> the people are all crazy! This only adds to the humor when she's passed over for the part in favor of London. And when Maddie is repeatedly told that she looks nothing like Sharpay. Yeah, we're gonna bop, 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 bop to the top. Wipe away your inhibition. Number six, the fairest of them all. After being accidentally entered into a beauty pageant, Cody is forced to tackle one of the oldest decisions known to men, choosing between money and love. Two thousand dollars? He's a genius! Game time just you go, girl! 
Victoria Justice plays Cody's romantic interest, Rebecca. She's a fellow pageant contestant, and Cody soon realizes that his victory would mean Rebecca's defeat. I need to start saving for vet school now. That's the only reason why I'm doing the pageant. What about you? Oh, I'm doing it to buy some bikes. <laughs> for underprivileged pets. <laughs> However, Zach forces Cody to continue competing in hopes of winning the prize money to buy bikes. This episode brings out the best in both twins. Zach is at his most zany and creative, while Cody is at his most sweet and sensitive. Bye. I hate to say goodbye because, you know, we just met and now it's like you're going to be leaving and it's like... It's okay. <laughs> Number 5. The Sweet Life Goes Hollywood This two-part episode chronicles the twins' trek from the East Coast to the star-studded land of Hollywood to act as consultants for a show called How Sweet It Is. Sound familiar? So you can create three-dimensional characters that ring true to the viewing audience? Right on the snot locker. Upon arriving in Hollywood, the director decides that Zack and Cody should be the stars of the show rather than just consultants, and the boys get a taste of both the glory and the pressure of acting. Eventually, Cody's stage fright gets the twins fired from the show. They're immediately replaced by the Australian pop duo The Veronicas, composed of identical twins Lisa and Jessica. I'm breaking apart, all you do is call me. The abundant self-referential humor and endless antics make this West Coast special a treat to watch. Here we go! I can't wait to see our luxury suite! <laughs> You're kidding. Number 4. Risk It All in this aptly named episode, the twins compete in a local game show. What country has just a red circle on its flag? Japan! Correct! <laughs> Both play to their unique strengths. Cody solves the mental challenges, while Zack completes the physical ones. However, things take a turn for the worse when Zack finds himself unable to perform. Maybe we should stop. What are you talking about? We're doing great! Hey, you're not the one who had to wrestle a squealing pig into a girdle. <laughs> yeah, but what about all this great stuff we won? So oh, I love stuff. Cody, showing a rare and greedy side to his personality, forces Zack to compete in the final round, which only leads to Zack sustaining an injury. Despite all of this, the twins still manage to win a prize, which hilariously turns out to be a stay at the Tipton Hotel. Guys, I'm sorry. I ain't nothing but a loser. <laughs> Number 3. Cody Goes to Camp Hurry up, Cody. I don't want you to miss your bus. Yeah, you don't want to miss a bus full of nerds going, two, four, six, eight. why can't we get a date? <laughs> well, bye, Zach. Yeah, whatever. While it's a running gag that Zach and Cody have clashing personalities, the show also frequently highlights the more wholesome side of having a sibling. This episode is a prime example of Zach and Cody's relationship dynamic. While Zach frequently teases Cody for being shy and nerdy, he realizes how much he misses Cody once Cody leaves for math camp. Why don't you ever answer this thing? I've got important news. I just beat my new high score in Alien Kung Fu Slamma Jamma. In fact, Zach misses Cody so much that he enlists London's help to drive him to Cody's camp. Hilarity ensues once it becomes clear that London is unsurprisingly horrible at driving. This episode spawned the now infamous Prindle scene and gave viewers a glimpse into Zack and Cody's fraternal bond. I met a child, Mosby. I know how to spell Prindle. It is not something you spell. It is a gear shift. The letters stand for Park Reverse Neutral Drive and Low. Number 2. The Sweet Smell of Excess With the help of Arwen's parallel universalizer machine, the twins transport into an alternate universe in which London works in the candy shop, Maddie is an heiress, and Mr. Mosby is fun and carefree. What do you think of my new lid? Tight! Actually, it fits perfectly. Ah! Most importantly, in this universe, Zack and Cody are free to do whatever they please. They run around the hotel, jump on couches, and eat candy for two days straight. Don't you have any vegetables? Like green beans, lima beans, string beans? How about jelly beans? <laughs> Yum. However, they soon realize that there can be too much of a good thing, and eventually decide that their life back home is better than any alternate reality. This episode manages to deliver a message about appreciating what one has while maintaining the show's signature quirky sense of humor. 
Zack and Cody doing whatever they want with no one to stop them? That's chaotic evil. Before we unveil our most memorable number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. The chips is our place to play. Room service, movies, and ice cream. In Paris, New York, or Bombay. <laughs> And that's how you separate an egg. <laughs> this is how you separate a pie from its pan. <laughs> Get your mitts off the boss, floozy. It's pronounced flossy. Oh. Come away with me, doll. She's not going to want to go where you're going, Peppers. Did he do all this? Yup. All for you, so you could have the best prom ever. Zach, I love you. I can't wait to see Jeff's face. Jeff? And you might want this back. Why? Cause you're broke! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Ghost of Sweet 613 Muriel, where is Sweet 613? Over there. But if you value your life, don't go in there. Let's go in! Uh, let's not! Avid viewers of the Disney Channel will definitely remember this classic Halloween special and its perfect blend of horror and comedy. Gossip about the ghost of a woman named Irene residing in Suite 613 brings the whole gang together. Cody, trust me. There is no ghost here causing weird things to happen. <laughs> As the legend goes, Irene and her husband stayed in the suite, but their romance ended when he left Irene to fight in the war, and for an Italian woman. After hearing the tale, Zack, Cody, London, Esteban, and Maddie team up together to spend a night in the suite. Are you the ghost of Irene? Yes! My spirit is doomed to languish in agony for all eternity! The most captivating part of this episode is undoubtedly Esteban's seance during which he contacts Irene's ghost, and where everyone in the suite, especially Zack and the audience, are given the fright of their lives. Zack and Cody, the genre-bending Disney show that we didn't know we needed. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments or tweet me at Phoebe underscore WM. And check out this video.